Welcome everyone. My name is Rhonda Schapfler. I am the business correspondent at NJ Spotlight News and I am absolutely thrilled to have a discussion with our state's top legislative leaders this morning. We are going to tackle issues related to the economy and what's going on in the business community. So I want to welcome Senate President Steve Sweeney, Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin, Senate Minority Leader Tom Kane, and Assembly Minority Leader John Bramnick. Gentlemen, so good to see all of you. Thank you, Rada. Nice to be with you. I know we won't have enough time because this is not a shy group, but we really, really are happy that you are here with us to uh, talk about some of these important issues. So let's start with what uh, has been going on in our state, and of course, that's COVID-19. Uh, the numbers are, are dismal. More than 300,000 residents have contracted COVID-19. We know we have around 15,000 of our residents who have died. About 1.8 million of our residents have had to file for unemployment. That's about a third of the state's workforce. Uh, so these are some tough times that we've all been living through and that you all and the state legislature has been trying to manage through. Could you discuss your views of the legislature's role in handling the pandemic and the resulting economic downturn? And what role do you want to play as we look beyond and think about the state's recovery? And Senate President, I'd like to start with you. Well, you know, obviously, uh, we've been through some very difficult times and there's a lot of excitement right now because we're hearing about, about vaccines, which you know I'm hearing are going to come pretty quickly, and there's more and more companies uh, getting in position to help us get through this. And I tell people I'll be one of the first ones in line, you know, uh, to get a vaccine when I can. When I can, um, you know, with everything that you described, the fact that we're we're in the position we're in right now. I mean, financially, we, we've taken some hits, but it could, have been, it could actually have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. Now our focus is next year's budget and finding ways to uh, ensure funding, you know, schools and colleges and try to get ourselves out of this funk that we're in. I'm, uh, I'm very hopeful uh, with President-elect Biden, with with the Republican leadership in the Senate, he served there a long time. There's relationships there. I think politics are going to get pushed to the side a little bit because we all, Republicans, Democrats, all know that we need to do something to help the states out. Uh, and, you know, hopefully that, that comes quickly, vaccines come quickly, and we can get back to normal, you know, by the summer that we start getting some sense of normalcy again. And our economy is this way we can get our people back working again. You know, and we're going to need to do stimulus. We're going to need to do a lot of infrastructure when I say stimulus, get get things moving. We, we need the Hudson Bergen light rail. We need the Gloucester Camden light rail projects to get going. Um, we need to create jobs. And that means that I, I know the speaker and I and Tom and John will be working on an incentive package that we, we really need to try to get done by the end of the year. So uh, somebody, uh, feel free to, of course, jump in to let's focus on that incentive package a little bit and give us, give us an idea about what some of the talks are centering around. And maybe Assembly Speaker, you can take that one. Sure. Uh, first of all, and I, I think uh, to your the earlier question and to your point, uh, and to the Senate President's point, this is, these are a little, they're very troubling times as the numbers continue to spike up. We, I live in Woodbridge Township, and we've had 50, more than 50 cases yesterday of 50 new cases of COVID-19. First, that matched the number uh, from I think it was April 26th. So we're looking at April kind of numbers, uh, and that has to give us all pause because we know about the economic impact that we experienced in in March and April and May uh, caused us to lose billions of dollars in revenue. Uh, and, and so it, it is a time to be concerned at, and a time to be hopeful as, as vaccinations look uh, to be in the, in the not so distant uh, future and therapies and uh, continue to be developed by uh, you know, drug manufacturers uh, to help combat that. Some have been approved by the, by the FDA. Um, and, and, it's, and so we move on. Uh, and you're right. I, mean, I think the Senate President is right. We need to get this uh, incentive program running. It, it, it fell off the table a little bit or it slipped to the side anyway and didn't fall off the table. Uh, 
but I mean, there are there are, you know the the kind of investments that we we want to have are going to be those that are, are are going to be designed to bring about great innovation and uh, uh, recentering the the growth of the 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 state in in those ways uh, around uh, things like that. Uh, you know, there are programs to uh, provide tax incentives to. Uh, businesses to help us to be able to compete with other other states as they try to attract businesses to their community. Uh, there are investments for uh, the future. We, there are proposals to, uh, to 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 allow people to uh, have workspace, uh, which will will let them be together. You know, it, back in the in the at the growth of the industrial era, the the industrial titans of the day all got together and talked about. It these things. I think we can do that uh, in, a, in, a, in a different way uh, with innovators as they uh, and make New Jersey an innovation hub. Um, so it, it's important we get back to that, uh, those incentives. Uh, I think there's, there's, there's lots of work being done uh, right now. I think uh, uh, the, the Senate certainly and the, and the assembly are focused on it along with the governor's office. Uh, and, and we'll, you know, we'll work to get those things done. Um, but we also do have to uh, include infrastructure as part of the recovery process. Uh, it means real jobs, uh, good paying jobs, uh, and and means that people will be able to get, uh, you know, back to work and we'll, we'll continue to grow things. The, you, you've seen, I've seen in private industry, uh, any number of places who have undertaken uh, to do renovations to their facilities because uh, so many people are working from home because uh, things have slowed down. We should we should take that time, uh, that opportunity uh, here, uh, and get and get people to work uh, and invest in our infrastructure. Um, use the funds that we have available uh, and get rolling. So uh, I think there's, you know, there this will end, uh, and there there will be a, a tomorrow. Uh, and how we prepare for that tomorrow uh, is something we ought to be thinking about right now. Uh, and I think that we have the opportunity and we'll, we'll, we'll take good advantage of that. Uh, Senator Kane, over to you. I heard the words funds available. So that's always an interesting phrase in New Jersey. But I want to get your thoughts on monies that we still have from the CARES Act, money that has to be spent between now and the end of the year. What's your sense on uh, what other possibilities might be out there for the remainder of these funds? Well, Every, COVID impacted every family, every downtown in New Jersey. And we need to all work together on a bipartisan basis to safely grow the economy in New Jersey. And we need to be smart about that. And we need to look back, um, back in March and April to see, and over the course of the summer, about what type of decisions were made correctly, what type of decisions were made incorrectly, uh, what, what, what were the impacts and, and whether that be on small businesses, on families, on, on nursing homes, on, um, on oversight responsibilities, uh, we need to make sure that as this next wave is upon us, that we're making the right decisions going forward. And my, my caucus has been pushing for a very long time to make sure that the $2.4 billion worth of CARES Act money that was distributed to the state all the way back in April uh, is appropriately and properly sent out to help out some small businesses, nonprofits, and, and and many other schools and other people impacted by the uh, by this crisis um, that that has impacted the entire country and the entire globe. And so we've been pushing since April to have that that uh, pushed out. And unfortunately, the state auditor saw uh, back at the end of September that only 10% of the 2.4 million dollars had been dispersed. That was a far lagging behind statistics that our neighboring states, New York, Pennsylvania, and many other states across the country. So my caucus, including uh, Declan O'Scanlan, Michael Testa, Steve Orojo, uh, Sam Thompson, are calling for an emergency session of the legislature to say we, there's a $2.5 billion surplus that exists in the state budget right now. This court CARES Act money that remains undistributed. We should have a special emergency session to push out that 300 million to help out those nonprofits and those small businesses. And we can do that on a bipartisan basis because we've got to make sure that the people, people are protected in our economy. And I think when we look back at the things we can do together on a bipartisan basis, the very beginning of the pandemic, the legislature on a bipartisan basis, the executive branch and people across the state came together and said, how are we going to make sure that as the first wave hit, 
how are we going to keep um, the people in New Jersey safe? We also have right now focused on both safety as well as growing the economy in a, in a safe and secure manner. Well, since you brought it up, uh, let's ask, are we going to be having any last minute sessions scheduled? Senator well, Sweeney, Assemblyman Kaplan? Well, first, we, 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 we have to make sure that what we're looking at is true. Uh, we've, we've read the same audit report. Uh, we've reached out to the administration. They claim this money is committed. You know what I mean? And the money has to be committed. Like some of these programs are two and three years long. I just spoke to the chief of staff. So, I, you know, but I, I had the same reaction that Tom did. You know, like if this money's sitting around, it's got to get out. But uh, right now we got to find out, is it really sitting around? You know, we're not talking about tapping the surplus. We're talking about the CARES Act funding. Right. We, we, we shouldn't leave the, time, year, on, the, way the time, legislation. time on the table, but we should make sure that, that you know, we're not uh, double spending uh, money too. Let's make sure that that's right. We have, and by the way, we have a, we both the Senate and the assembly have a voting session scheduled for December the 17th. So uh, quite honestly, uh, that, that seems to me like an appropriate time if we need to do anything to, to do it. Well, we should do it as quick as possible. And the way the legislation is, is written, it would be either CARES Act or out of the, the $2.5 billion worth of surplus that exists. Because we've got to get to help out, make sure these small businesses, that these nonprofits and these families are helped across the state of New Jersey. And it needs, it needs to be done on a bipartisan basis. But, but you know, I, I, I'm all in favor of spending the CARES Act funding. But we're going into another budget year, and I think things are going to get worse, not better. So before we tap into surplus, we really need to know where we're at. And we'll have a better idea of that come February. Because I certainly don't want to see any new taxes in the next year's budget. I think we've been enough. So um, again, we got to see where we're at. I'm not, I'm not saying Tom's wrong. You know what I mean? If there's CARES Act money that hasn't been distributed, then we're going to make sure it gets distributed. But right now... Talking to the administration, they say the money's committed. That's what they've told me. I just reached out to them about this. Because uh, we, when we got the report, we, the first thing we did is, what the hell's going on? And we, we went right to them. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I lost the oh, okay. second half of, 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 yeah. of Senator Bean's uh, comment and the first half of the Senate President's comment. But, uh, it, it, you know, it seems to me, we look, we have prioritized in the legislature uh, assistance to business. It was one of the first bills that we did in both the Senate and the Assembly that very first week when we went on the phone. Now, uh, and the goal there was to try to keep people employed. We put, a, we put uh, I think it was five or $10 million in it. Now, it turned out to be uh, uh, not nearly enough, and business had reacted very quickly and laid people off. Uh, but I think uh, we all recognize, uh, and I know the Senate President and I have had any number of conversations about making sure that we keep we get people back to work. That's the best stimulus package that we can have. Uh, and, and so we don't we don't want to leave any money laying on the table. In fact, we want more from Washington. Uh, you know, we, we need them to step up and and continue to help uh, the state. So uh, we'll, we'll make sure it's all spent. Uh, we'll do it orderly, and you know. Expedition. Rhonda, it's John Bramnick over here. Just yeah, I was comment. about First, to call on you. I was like, boy, he's sitting there quietly. He, I'm going to him next, please. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we've discussed so far. Well, is it a secret as to what's been committed? I don't understand. Are we living in a country where things are not transparent? Like, if we ask the governor, well, it's committed. Well, who's it committed to, right? So, did anyone get an answer from the governor where it's committed to? That's my question one. But before I ask all of the other panelists that, the next issue is let's get a couple things straight. And that is that COVID is not the flu. I got a friend who's a stand-up comedian, Mike Marino. He got the flu. I won't use, the, I'm sorry, he got COVID. He says it ain't the flu, right? And he used some other choice words to say it's not the flu. So that. The, those out there playing down the seriousness of COVID, I think, should be called out for those misrepresentations. We worked very closely at the beginning, myself and the speaker. We moved a lot of bipartisan bills uh, that helped homeowners, helped people in apartments, uh, actually had some money for EDA. Now it's time 
to have a direct conversation with these small businesses that are going out of businesses. And I've asked the governor over and over again, have some hearings, have your own hearings. Let these small business people talk to you directly. Let them tell you their ideas. I understand what he does. He has his experts. He said the other day uh, on uh, News 12, he said, you know, I speak to doctors. Speak to everyone. Let them be heard. It is so frustrating for someone who owns a bar or a restaurant not to be able to talk to anyone uh, high up in the administration. He needs to have an open discussion with these people. That's not saying his decisions are wrong per se. We just need some more openness other than executive orders for businesses in the state. And I agree the federal government's got to come through with money because all due respect to the state of New Jersey, we don't have enough money to fix this problem. We should absolutely have a special session. We should take CARES money. It's not committed and spend it, but we're going to need federal help. No question about it. Gentlemen, I want to switch gears uh, for a moment and talk about some of the concerns the business community had through the budget process. Um, you've all raised the point that the business community continues to struggle. Um, and there were some concerns about tax increases for businesses and um, also mandates that now businesses face as we continue to work through the pandemic. Uh, should businesses just expect to continue to see tax increases every year? Uh, look, I'll, I guess I'll go first. Uh, I, I think the answer to that is that we never look to raise taxes. I mean, it, it, it's been pretty well documented that the, the Senate president and I have, have stood the ground on taxes on many times. This year we extended the CBT, which was, uh, was about to expire. We did it because what we tried to do was come up with a balanced approach to get us through this extraordinarily uh, unusual time. Uh, and, and so I supported it and, and we, we passed it out and, and, you know, and, and hopefully that will, it, it, remember we didn't make it permanent. Uh, it, it'll expire after four years and hopefully we'll be in a good place. Then we'll be able to, to, to do it. So we, uh, we guard against raising taxes as, uh, diligently. Sometimes we have to do it. Sometimes we, this time we did a balancing act, right? We had, we had to make an incredibly difficult choice in an incredibly unusual time. Uh, I don't think I ever thought I would agree uh, to borrow four and a half billion dollars, uh, but it, it made sense because uh, we were doing some other things as well. We 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 deappropriated nearly a billion dollars in uh, to get through the end of the, the last budget, so we cut spending there. We 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 raised taxes some, but gave a middle class tax cut. Uh, to others because those people are, are struggling. Uh, and we tried to do was create uh, a hole that wasn't quite as deep. So when the recovery comes, and, and again, I'm confident that the recovery comes, maybe we won't have to get, dig too far out to get back to where we were just last February. Remember, we got the budget last February. I think we were all um, uh, happy to see that the, the, uh, the revenue numbers were strong and the economy was rolling. So um, we, we made some challenging times, but just because uh, we did something in one year, look, each budget stands on its own. Uh, and, and like the Senate president, I, I, I don't have any, uh, I hope we're not raising any taxes in, in next year's budget. Uh, so, um, but, you know, so to, to say that we're just going to, to do that all the time is, is the answer I think is no. Rather, we have a lot of work to do. I mean, every survey talks about the business climate being one of the worst in the United States. So you would hope that government in New Jersey would understand how important it is to make this a welcoming state for business. Uh, our track record is not great. So consequently, I cannot be optimistic that there's not going to be more spending. I'm sure myself and Tom Kane Jr. will do what we can. Uh, but we're still not in charge. Mm, Senate President Sweeney, any uh, comment? Follow yeah, up I, I think that going back to what the speaker said earlier, I want to thank Tom and John because we did work and we have been working very well together dealing with this coronavirus. Uh, John had an idea to get restaurants $30 million. We passed the bill in both houses. The governor didn't sign it. But through the EDA gave $35 million of CARES Act money to restaurants that were hurting. 
I think we're all in this together. I got to be perfectly honest with you. We might do things a little bit differently at times, but I think that we as Democrats and Republicans have been an example of what Washington should do in difficult times. We work together. And, and I really want to thank Tom and John for the cooperation that they've given us through these times because it's made a difference. Now, do we disagree on some things? Of course we do, and we should. But I think we're all, like I said earlier, if there's extra CARES Act money laying around, let's, let's make sure we get it out. And we will work together to get it out and make it get to the businesses that, should, that we can help. Again, there's, there's things we need to do, we're going to continue to do. Uh, you know, I was very disappointed about the CBT being extended. But honestly, from what the speaker said, we, we were just not in a position. You know, people say, well, you're, you're raising taxes. Well, you're raising taxes on companies, and they're not small companies, or C corporations that got a windfall from the federal government. They got the, had their taxes cut from 35% to 21%. We had it phased out. In fact, the way we even wrote the extension is if, if that tax reduction is reversed, it goes away. And, you know, I mean, we wrote it in the bill. But, you know, I would say what's worse okay, we cut school funding so we can blame the towns and the counties for raising taxes. We can reduce funding to higher education so that students can pay more. There's no magic way of getting around this. Our budget last February was the best finances that I have seen since I've been in the legislature. We, all the numbers were pointing in the right direction. And then this coronavirus hit. You know, I can tell you at least the Senate if we didn't have this virus hit, we weren't raising any taxes. You know, I've imposed the millionaire's tax the last several years because I, I think it wasn't the right move. And, you know, it was pretty hard arguing against, you know, doing some help for the middle class. And I hope I don't wind up living to regret it, you know, with the, the millionaire's tax. And we'll see. But all in all, I think that we have worked together very well. Uh, even through disagreements, and, and John and Tom both have shown real leadership because it's easy enough to just sit back and, and criticize. It's easy enough, but to work together in times, times the way this country is right now, it's not that easy. You all have had a we, very tough couple of months for sure. Go ahead, Senator Kane. No, I, I, think, I think we all believe that our responsibility in Trenton is to serve our constituents first and foremost, and make sure that they and their families are safe and secure. And we need to do our job on a bipartisan basis to grow the economy and create educational opportunities. Um, but I think when people look down at what's hap been happening in Trenton for, for a long time, uh, getting back to your original point is that there's a real um, inconsistency and unpredictability regarding this tax structure. And whether they are actually taxes that have passed over the course of the last couple of decades in New Jersey from income uh, tax increases, corporate tax increases, you know, variety of health care plan tax increases and a variety of other areas. You know, people look at that and say there's an unpredictability year to year within the economic profile in New Jersey. And when they look to say, you know, right now, for example, the financial transactions tax, which would take place on servers, which would put, you know, people who work. Um, on behalf, you know, within the, you know, IBEW and other um, employees who service those those uh, servers uh, and have an impact on that job as well as, you know, local jobs. I mean, we've got to focus, you know, I believe going forward, just like Massachusetts. I mean, Massachusetts has got a completely consistent tax structure, predictable year in, year out. doesn't matter whether you've got a Republican governor, Democratic governor, you know, Democratic majority in the legislature, Republican majority in the legislature. There's a complete predictability within that tax code year to year. And when people look to whether taxes passed or taxes proposed, they want to have a plan that the next five years to locate the companies or the next 20 years to locate their families. That type of consistency and predictability has to happen. And whether it's within the tax incentive programs that, that we uh, have to have predictable and, and people need to have that put forth, or whether it be on a variety of other broader based taxes, I mean, those are the things that people look to as we're going to safely grow the economy. I mean, right now, all four of us should be focusing on, and I think the legislature and everybody in New Jersey should say, what have we learned for the future of commuting, 
What have we learned about the future of job growth? What have we learned about what people can you know do with whether in their home offices or whether in uh, local uh, localized businesses? What what are the next uh, generation of innovation ever going forward? And we should have New Jersey pivot, to, you know, continue to be the focus of the innovative state. I mean, that's where our history has been, it's where it's going to be. But we need to make sure how do we make sure our infrastructure is where it needs to be, that our our commuting patterns are, you know, do we look at those and how do we have job growth and job economic opportunity from sole proprietorships up to the largest corporations uh, and make sure we've got a healthy and robust uh, nonprofit sector as well. These are all things I think we need to start to look at and continue to focus on as a, as a legislative body, but also as, as the citizens of, of, of the state. You know, you raised the um, point of tax incentives. And of course, before the pandemic, this is all we were reporters who were really talking about as we tried to figure out what the next step was from you all regarding uh, tax incentives in the state. Um, Assemblyman Coughlin, Coughlin, when does that conversation pick up again? And to the Senator's point, how do we rethink uh, tax incentives? When do you start doing that? And, and how has the conversation now completely changed after this pandemic? So, well, so the conversations really never stopped. It just kind of slowed down. In fact, I think there's a meeting uh, with our staff, uh, Steve's staff and my staff on, on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, we're, you know, we're right back at it. Uh, I, I, look, I think I think what we need to do is take a, a look at the, at the longer term, as I said. That by the time these tax incentives plans gets in place, even if we were to adopt it tomorrow, uh, we're talking about projects that are years down the road. So uh, I think we need to uh, understand what we got to kind of project. What was changed would be to project and see what the new markets may look like, right? I think all of us recognize that commercial uh, real estate may be different two years from now than it is today because employers have come to understand that their employees can work from home and be very effective. I think that may, may change, right? How we make that, the, 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 like mixed use projects, how much, how much, what percentage of that goes to commercial real estate? Are, are people going to really be building those, those, uh, you know, as, me, as much, as much, I'm sorry, uh, uh, because people going for, I might have a, a son and a daughter-in-law who work in the city, uh, for example, I'm not sure that they're, they're certainly not going back into the city until, uh, the spring or summer, and some of them may may not. They may just they, they may be assigned to work, and they work for CBS, and one works for uh, you know a, an arts uh, uh, marketing uh, company. So they may work from home. Now, will that make m people come to New Jersey? Well, let's hope, right? If they're going to they're going to build anywhere, let's hope they're building it in New Jersey, uh, so we get a chance to poach some of those those folks back. Um, uh, but I think that's that will impact how we go forward with things. We have to we'll have to look at where we're at with those because we the, when we started we were talking about uh, the the economy as we knew it then is the economy as we know it will be going to be different. And I think that's where we have to figure out you know, if we need to make modifications. Senator Bramnick, what are your thoughts on that? I think we need tax incentive programs. We need them now. I think politics got involved in this. It's easy to criticize these programs because when you have tax incentives, it's always difficult to make it 100% fair. But the business community looks all over the nation. Where am I going to relocate? Give them a reason to come here. They're not coming here because our business environment is great. So that's why we need tax incentives more than most other states. So consequently, we need to do that quickly it does not have to be perfect, but it has to be done so businesses know that New Jersey is now a place that's competitive, that we want you here, and we're willing to pay for it. In addition, I do have a follow-up, and that is I'm concerned how to answer to this small restaurant owner or bar owner who's barely surviving, may go under. It seems to me that one if they have to wait for the federal stimulus program, that may, may be a problem. But it is an area, I think, that we need to have an open hearing with those business owners so we can hear their frustration. It may light a fire under us or the governor's office in terms of reacting quickly. 
So that would be my suggestions. Let's hear from them now because that's the immediate crisis. The tax incentive programs are really important long-term and we should do it. But those business owners who are so frustrated now need to, an opportunity to speak to us. Senator Sweeney, how is the balance going to move forward if we have to see New Jersey um, get a little bit more restrictive on its businesses? You know, obviously the governor has said he does not prefer that. Um, but if our numbers continue to climb and situations get worse, what have we learned from the last couple of months that we might be able to implement uh, if we have to go down that road again? Well, one, I think that we've learned a lot. If you go back to March and April, uh, a lot more hospitalizations, a lot more, a lot more fatalities. Um, the, the, the healthcare systems have learned how to deal with this now, you know, and they're better equipped and better prepared now. There was a shortage of PPE. You know, you can document all the problems that existed when this hit us at once. So when you look at it now, I know the number counts are high, but our hospitalizations are much lower than they were. And people in intensive care on ventilators are much lower than it was. Because, you know, back then they would rush to put a person on a ventilator. What did they learn? Don't rush to put, put a person on a ventilator. It's not the best thing for them. And there are therapeutics that are being involved now. And, and uh, really many of them being created here in New Jersey, which I'm very proud of our pharmaceutical industry for creating some of the, some of the therapeutics to help with this. So I think we've learned a lot. I would not want to see us go into a shutdown again. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I thought we could have had in-person voting this year, even with the numbers going up. It's just doing the obvious things. You know, John said this earlier, this is not the flu. For the people that keep yelling that it's just the flu, it's not. I've got friends that have gotten it that told me they've been very sick. Wearing a mask is not a sign of, 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 of being weak. Is showing that you care about others. Even if you don't believe it, humor us. Just, you know, because it, it, it tends to, it seems like it works. So the simplest of things can make a huge difference in life. And look, avoiding the mistakes. It was a mistake to send people back in nursing homes. We know that, that we're infected. That was an obvious. Governor Cuomo said if, you know, if he had to do it over again, he wouldn't have done it. So we've learned a lot. So I don't think we, it warrants a shutdown. In fact, uh, my assembly colleague, John Bersicelli, and I are both working on a bill to deal with the state, like other states do, where, you know, instead of a complete shutdown in the state, depending on how things look in, in different areas, you can operate differently. Because it's not, it's kind of punitive to punish people if it's not that bad. But that being said, it's not good right now. It's not good right now, so we have to take another look. And with Thanksgiving, it's, it's going to be a, a different Thanksgiving than any of us have ever known before. But I saw airports packed with people. And, and I'm concerned about what's going to come two weeks from now. You know, that's going to be – we're going to see how well we did or we didn't do. But we've learned a lot. From I think we've learned a whole lot. And uh, my brother's head of emergency medicine at a hospital in the state of New Jersey, and he said doctors and nurses aren't getting sick because they know how to deal with it now. And that's the most important thing, keeping them safe and uh, making sure one, one, one of my plugs, I know, forget, not just nursing homes, there's group homes with people with disabilities. They need to be protected too. Last time around, they were not protected. They were the last people thought of. And, uh, you know, we need to think of them also. I want to ask you all about um, one issue that has come up in terms of this COVID environment that the business community has raised, and that is liability for businesses as people return to the workplace. Um, where are we with that, and how potentially will this be addressed? And Senator Kane, I'll start with you on that. Well, I, I think when we were right at the beginning of, of this crisis, we, uh, as, on a bipartisan basis, the legislature and the governor signed into law a bill that uh, gave liability protections to frontline workers, whether they be doctors, nurses, uh, the health systems, uh, the EMTs, uh, that if they were operating within the scope of, of the COVID crisis, that they would have certain liability protections. Um, so they would make sure they could, could it be flexible and, and be able to do their job effectively to protect the population. 
Um, I think that we're growing our way and have to safely grow our way out of this uh, this, cri this economic crisis right now, uh, offering uh, some limited li liability protections to those employers uh, that actually you know follow the CDC guidelines, follow whatever the state guidelines are, follow county and municipal guidelines, um, but are following every single you know, respective guideline to, to a T and, and even before that, um, as they're seeking to grow, I think it's appropriate to have a, certain, a, a little bit of liability protection for those individuals and those corporations and those nonprofits that are, are trying to play by all, you know, try to follow all the rules and, and grow, grow safely while protecting people. That should be something we should be discussing as well on the state level, some, some sort of liability protection for those individuals. Who would like to add to that? I'm, I'm happy to add to it. I'm a plaintiff's lawyer, been a plaintiff's lawyer for 40 years. Uh, don't do any defense work, but on this issue, and I've said it before that until we know exactly what the protocol is, it seems that businesses need some protection because even the firm I, rep, uh, I own uh, with 55 people, we don't really know every week we hear the way it's transmitted changes. So it'd be hard for, in my judgment, not to give some protection to businesses until we know uh, how this is transmitted. We try our best with protocols, but we're not sure. So the only bill I was concerned about was automatically if someone was infected, that that would be deemed to come from work. I thought that was overbroad. Uh, look, I'm not a big fan of immunity bills because in my judgment, sometimes standards go down when you give immunity. But we do have to have a discussion on how to protect businesses that don't have exactly the protocol from any source, how to protect your employees. You know, we put up screens, uh, we wear masks, we have uh, hand sanitizers. But maybe there's something that we're supposed to be doing we're not doing. So it is really important that businesses are not overrun with lawsuits because they don't know exactly how to protect their employees. Assembly Speaker Coughlin, where's the conversation go now from this point on liability? Well, I, look, I, I probably have a contrarian view. I, I think that liabilities, uh, immunities ought to be given in very, very rare circumstances and for really good reasons. We, we did pass one in the, in, the, uh, in the summer, I guess it was, or whenever. Uh, it, that was in large measure designed to allow doctors to, to come to work. They were, they were concerned about that because of the newness of the, uh, of the disease and the lack of uh, real direction as to how to proceed. So we, we did that. Uh, but going forward, I, I think that, look, I think businesses are working very hard uh, to try to make sure uh, that they're protecting their clients, protecting their employees, uh, making it safe for people. Uh, and I think we shouldn't do anything that might diminish that. As John pointed out, you know, you, you, you give an immunity, you, you run the risk of, of people taking, it, taking their foot off the gas uh, in some respects. And beyond that, I think that you need to make sure that there's consumer confidence for employees and for customers. Uh, we don't want uh, them to, to worry that they may be in a situation because, well, they're, look, uh, they're exempt from a lawsuit. Why would, they, why would they spend the money at a time when it, it may be challenging to spend that money? Uh, I don't know that we businesses have been overrun with claims. And, and quite con candidly, I think uh, John, who's a brilliant plaintiff's attorney, would tell you this is going to be a hard, hard case to prove, right? People are out and about in many places. How do you prove it came from this shop or that shop? Uh, you know, if you're out and doing your Christmas shopping uh, and you stop and have a restaurant, well, now you have five or 10 potential uh, defendants. I, are people going to really bring those kind of actions? If they do, then maybe we need to, to reconsider. But I'm not yet convinced that we need to, uh, to pass an immunity bill. I want to switch gears and um, talk about another big piece of legislation that you all are working on. And that, of course, is marijuana. Now, there's been uh, some back and forth on the taxing of a new industry for New Jersey. But there is another issue of interest to businesses, and that has to do with prioritizing the safety of the workplace. Uh, Senate President Sweeney, 
Where are we now in terms of uh, the marijuana legislation moving forward? And how will the needs of businesses be addressed, do you think? Well, you know, I, I can understand the fear of employers for one reason. I'm an iron worker by trade, union iron worker. And uh, my guys work high in the air, you know, and we're, we, we as an organization are a drug-free workplace. But with the legalization of marijuana, it's changed the game. So one of the things that uh, we inserted in that I liked was the ability for companies to have, whether it's their safety officer or their, uh, their HR director, to become a DRE. Uh, you know, so that so they can get that training. It's an eight hour course so they can tell if someone's impaired. The problem is we don't have a test. You know, with the alcohol, you can blow into a machine and right then and there, you know the results. People that are smoking the night before are going to have levels in them. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, they're not impaired. And you can't restrict what someone does in their private life. So we're it, it's really a challenge right now, you know, with medical our Supreme Court ruled unanimously that you can't, if, if I got the card, that you can't fire me. You can't do anything because it's, it's it's a medical treatment. Well, guess what? If I'm get worried about the real life, I'm just going to get a card. Whether I buy the marijuana legally or not, I'm going to have a prescription. You know, that's what people are going to do. So there's a lot of challenges to try to figure this out. You know, the speaker and I were moving quickly to try to get this done. But uh, we're, we're taking a hard look at it. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, if I drink uh, tonight, I go to work tomorrow, I'm not drunk. You know, there's nothing you can do. Well, it's the same thing with marijuana right now. It's, uh, the, the difference is there is a test. I know they're developing a test, they're developing a swipe test that we're, I've heard for the last year and a half is coming where you'll be able to know whether someone's impaired when they get to a job site. But the next best thing in my mind is DRE, like having people either you can contact some contract with someone to be come in and look at it or or you can train somebody, an employer, an employee to, that works for you to be the DRE uh, officer in your in your business. Senator Kane, what is uh, the view from your side of the aisle on um, how these negotiations are continuing over that legislation? Well, I think you backing up on what Steve's talking about. I mean, obviously, so many people in the state are concerned about any tax increases, and it seems to me that they're, they're, the negotiations right now are breaking down over which taxes to increase on on people. Um, but there's the testing issue, the impact on the brain, are all things that many people across the state uh, have expressed concern about. So best guess on when uh, this bill might, I mean, the end of the year, or are we now potentially looking for discussions continuing past, uh, past January? Because there's not that many sessions left this year. Yeah, there's, 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 well, there's one scheduled session left uh, in, in this year on the assembly side, and I believe on the Senate side too, right, Steve? Uh, I, I think there are there are some differences in the bills that came out uh, on Thursday. I think we'll we'll, we'll get together. We, I think we have time to to put these things together before the seventeenth. Um, uh, obviously, the, some of the some of them are new. We hadn't talked about before, but you know, an idea is, is that the, the the DRE seems to make some some real sense. I mean, that that is the dichotomy, right? It is now legal, and so. The, it's just like it's legal to have a have a drink on uh, on Sunday, and I think, uh, uh, and then go to work on Monday. The question is whether you're impaired when you're when you're conducting your job, right? And that's a that's a that would be a, a that's a, a clear objective standard for an employer too, right? That's if if employers want certainty, that's the kind of a standard you should have. Are the are you impaired? Are you able to do your work or, or not? So look, I, I think we, we need to get to, uh, together and we need to work this through. But I, I think that there's uh, every chance that we'll get something done the seventeenth. Okay, we'll maybe hold you to that, but we'll see. <laughs> As we um, look ahead um, to the new year. Um, and of course, there, there will still be front and center dealing with the economic fo uh, fallout from COVID-19. From the business perspective, 
Are there any changes that you all anticipate in 2021 that will be beneficial for businesses, whether that's a, a legislative item or something else? I mean, it's something that we've done already is to is to address the unemployment contribution. Uh, I think, you know, it, it as it structured because there's so many in, uh, unemployment c uh, claims right now, it would we're currently at B status, it would go instantly to E plus 10. So we've leveled that out over the next three years. And uh, I think we're going to uh, I think you'll continue to see us trying to find ways to financially support and uh, perhaps legislatively support, still looking for way at ways of how to help businesses succeed. So I think that all of those things are still on the table and, and not, we haven't, the incentive program will, will be out there and that, but those are new businesses or existing businesses. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to look at, at, at your proposals. I mean, we look at, I do all, all the time. I know everybody else does. Um, see if we find some things that we think we can afford and that we think we can, um, you put in place uh, and balance it with our, you know, our desire to uh, uh, help employees too, right? So then getting people back to work is going to be at the heart of, uh, of anything that I think we should do in terms of economic uh, recovery packages. Assemblyman Bramnick, your thoughts? I think with respect to businesses in crisis who have, are in crisis because of no fault of their own, we need to have a package of bills that waives taxes that are owed by these businesses in crisis. It's one thing to give them money. Uh, it's, it's probably simpler to say upon application, showing the crisis was directly related to COVID shutdowns, that we would give them waivers with respect to taxes that are owed or taxes that might be owed. I think that's the next step. And I think that the crisis that they suffer from, they'd love to hear from the legislature that we have bills pending such as that. Senator Sweeney, what about a different, a different way to look at workplace training? We just heard about the job losses in the state. I mean, it's, it's just been awful when you look at these numbers. People are eager to get back to work. And when companies are back on their feet, they're going to need workers if we hope the economy goes back to, to where it was. What can we do differently on that front? Well, first, listen, we have to, we have to hope the jobs come back quickly. You know, I, I don't want to be a pessimist, but I've been through a couple of recessions, and this is bigger than a recession. It's a depression. And, um, you know, it takes time. You know, I want to train people for the jobs that are there or the jobs that are to come. So, you know, we can do things. We can do a lot of things to help that. There's a lot of things the state can do to help prepare, prepare people for the jobs that are available. We do that every day of the week. You know, uh, counties do it through their county programs, or I know Tom's a big fan of county government. He knows that. Uh, this but, was a but, but, you know, we do it every day of the week. We just need to know what the jobs are that are coming to have the people prepared. And, the, you know, the state, you know, uh, shoulders the burden of that of those uh, of that cost of training. So we we do that now. You know, I think that uh, I, I'm just really concerned about next year because unless unless there's some kind of relief from the federal government, uh, you know, a lot of these small businesses stayed in place because of the PPP. Uh, we need another round of that. We need we need we need help to get us through another year of this. But once the vaccines kick in, you know, the devastation of the job losses. I just read about a restaurant in North Jersey that was open for 100 years. It's closed. You know, it's that, there are the things that bother me when you see successful businesses that are shutting down because we, we just can't function the way we normally do. I think go, that, that, that. Go ahead, Senator. No, I, I think we need to look uh, real time, I think, about what are the businesses, I mean, we can go through any town downtown right now, and there are many closed restaurants, many closed small businesses, uh, many, you know, businesses operating, you know, sort of half the size. And I think we need to focus, we need to understand right now, those types of businesses as, as a class that are on the brink of going out of business, we need to uh, be, I think, aggressive in our um, 
you know, the training programs to understand what what is going to be uh, current needs of the of the local employees and the local employers. We also need to focus, I think, on the next stage at real time. Is we've all talked about the uh, the vaccine here today, and the fact that so many of those uh, that research and those businesses um, and the higher education institutions are located here. I mean, right now, the fact that we've been able to have so much more research and innovation because we, you know, our, our higher infrastructure has been growing. Rutgers has, has you know, grown in, in ways that's been tremendous for the state. So we need to, I think, work together in ways to say, how are we gonna grow the economy through um, the Rutgers and other uh, higher education institutions? How are we going to uh, work on, you know, on the smaller local levels and figure out, as I talked about a couple of little while back, is what are the future, you know, business needs, what are the future commuting patterns? Because if we can focus on what the next stages and the current stages of, of which businesses are going to continue to grow, which, you know, which entities need, you know, some stability over time or some forgiveness uh, immediately. Um, but that type of predictability needs to happen. It's just not happening in too many people's lives right now. And that's the thing that we should be focusing on as a legislature. We only have a couple minutes, so before we go, Assembly Speaker, I want to turn to you. If there is more federal money coming next year, and it's a different scene out of Washington, mm -hmm. there's a wish list. I'm sure you have. Where does that money go? <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 I think there will be some federal stimulus that comes along. I think people will recognize that they that we need to get that done. Or uh, where where we'd like to, look, I think we we need to see what the form that takes. Uh, I, I would mind if they gave us some loan forgiveness as part of that package. That would be that would be particularly nice. Uh, other than that, look, I think we we need, as I said, to get people back to work. So how do we best do that? How do we get the still hundreds of thousands, if not million uh, New Jerseyans who are out there uh, back to work? And I think we, we can find, we'll come up with a plan that helps them and helps employers to get them there. Assemblyman Baramnik, you get the last word. Well, it's been a real pleasure to be with everybody today. I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And I'm hoping for the best uh, with these vaccines. Uh, this has been a very, very difficult time for many, many people. And I'm just, at this point, I'm hoping and praying that uh, we can destroy the COVID virus and we can get back to normalcy in New Jersey. And that is a nice way to end it. We do hope you're right. I wanna thank all of you for taking some time and spending this hour with me and sharing what's on your mind and how are you gonna help New Jersey get to where we all want it to be. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank Happy you. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Be safe. <laughs>